Truck World TV, sponsored by Auto Trader Trucks. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truck World TV here from our home from home at Junction 38 Services on the M6. Yep, as ever, it's been a very busy couple of weeks for the crew travelling here, there and everywhere in the pursuit and celebration of all things commercial vehicle. And here's what's coming up for you this week. We look at a campaign by Think Logistics aimed at getting young people interested in the industry. Tim's road test this week is the Fuso Canter and our driver's chat is all about driverless vehicles. Well, to kick us off this week, we've got one of our European reports. As recently, Tim dusted off the passport, ironed his lederhosen and headed off east to a quaint village in Germany. And apparently it wasn't just for beer and bratwurst. At least, that's what you told us. Yeah, but don't forget, it was your lederhosen, not mine. Bavaria, famous for its beautiful forests, stunning river mine, and of course, traditional German homes. But what am I surprised about this particular village? That nearly a third of all the UK trailer axles actually come from here. And that's because this quaint village is home to Saf Holland, one of the largest axle producers in the world. This state-of-the-art production facility has come a long way from its humble beginning in 1881, making farm machinery no prize for guessing this is the actual tubing that makes up the basic axle itself. What we've got to do now is put the spindles on both ends. Now how they actually do that is pretty unique. There's only four machines that can do this simultaneously at both sides. We've got one in China, we've got one in the US and two that are actually here in this factory. And one of the best features of this incredible machine is that it's actually made in the UK by Thomson, who are pioneers in the science of industrial friction welding. And here we see the end result of going through the, the machine. You can see there where the machine is actually fused together, the spindle to the tube. And you can see the heat distress that's on there as well. It physically put that in, created that heat, and it's become one complete unit now. And here we've got the collar that's fitted as well. And with the collar, that becomes part of the mounting bracket, as we'll see later on in the process. Like many modern factories, the SAF plant uses seamless integration of manpower and robotics to ensure a smooth production process. Here, robotic welders are used to mount the axles into their chassis frames before the whole assembly moves further down the production line to the on-site paint shop. The painting process is a simple yet highly effective dipping method where each of the axle assemblies are washed in three different dipping tanks before being submerged in the paint tank which is negatively charged to ensure completely even paint coverage. From there, the assembly is addressed with the moving components before heading to the next stage of production. And this is where the action gets the essential part of the process, the braking systems. Now here on the left hand side we've got the drum brakes, which are the old traditional way. And in fact, in the UK we're still on 75 to 80% of those actually on drum brakes. Whereas on the continent, they're completely the opposite way around. And we're looking at the disc brakes on the other side, and they're around 70%, 75 used for the continental way. The drum versus disc debate really comes down to personal choice of the operator and the application the truck is being used for. Disc can provide a harder braking force when it comes to proven reliability, and that's often what many operators do want. Drums win every time. This is the setup here for the drum brakes. This is the S-cam type. You can see the S there as well. The pneumatic brakes push on here, twist this, and then push the shoes against these drums here. And that's basically how you stop a trailer. When you consider how many vehicles on the road are actually fitted with axles from this plant, it's no surprise that the workers never seem to come up for air. And of course with robots, they never need tea breaks or lunch hours. 
I love about this factory is it's got some great technology and it turns up in some really unexpected places. For instance here, the guy behind me, it looks like he's got a standard uh, torque wrench, but actually when you look at it, it's connected to the computer and he literally, as he's pulling down on the torque wrench, setting it, it, the computer shows him exactly what force he's putting on there. Brilliant idea, very simple and very effective. With the stresses and the strains that most applications will put on these axles, they go through several stringent and demanding simulation tests in the factory. Every axis and potential load force is applied at several times a second to ensure that no matter what the road, speed or weight conditions are, the axles will continue to operate effectively. Seeing this test, you can't help thinking it's been based on some of our less than ideal UK roads. Once an axle assembly has passed quality control, the final step is a sign-off label and then it's moved to the dispatch area before it heading off to a customer somewhere in the world. That's it, their axles are on the wooden crates now, they're bagged up and sealed. And don't forget, 700 axles a day, that's every day, comes out of this factory. And that's also a great indication of how the UK and European truck market is doing at the moment. Amazing to think that, you know, potentially a third of those vehicles out there will have axles that have come from that. That yeah, yeah, in terms of trailers, yeah, definitely. And what amazes me is actually finding a place. It's because it's in a valley and it's a single story factory, basically. Once you, you see the houses and you think there's nothing there, and then all of a sudden you go down this road and it opens out into a massive factory. Yeah, industry, industry powerhouse. Now, when we go to places like that, we can't help but get excited. But one of the biggest challenges that the industry faces is getting young people excited in the commercial vehicle industry. An organisation called Think Logistics are tackling that problem head on. And they're going into colleges and schools and running courses with young people to really show them what an exciting opportunity the CV industry has. And we caught up with one of their events at Blackpool Sixth Form College. Breaking news folks, the commercial vehicle industry is a viable option as a career path. Who'd have thought it? That multi, multi billion pound industry that gets all our goods and services from A to B that keeps the country running, who'd have thought that that was actually run by people who have real jobs and real career paths? I'm being flippant because we still meet some people who think that the CV industry is just dirty, smelly vehicles clogging up the road. Far from it. Well, today we've come down to Blackpool Sixth Form College to look in on a Think Logistics course that's being run by Manpower, and that's all geared at getting young people really fired up and interested in this fantastic career path. So we'll go and see how they're getting on. The course is a great mix of classroom tuition as well as hands on activities to really keep the young people engaged. Here's Neil Caldwell from Think Logistics. Yeah, so I think it's a really sort of worthwhile thing for all businesses to be engaged with that are involved in logistics and transport. Um, we've got too few young people in our sector, and for those that um, are aware of us at all, uh, some of those perceptions aren't particularly good, and this is a great opportunity for businesses to get engaged, spend time with young people, and show them just what a great, great uh, set of career options exist across our sector. There's just a whole, an, an amazing array of, of jobs and we need to be spending a lot more time as a sector, as, as businesses, with these young people, with colleges, with schools, uh, to try and set that talent pipeline in place for people to see logistics and transport as a career of choice with great, great opportunity. By using fun experiments in the classroom, it allows the pupils to get hands-on experience, but is also a great way to learn about logistical challenges that the commercial vehicle and haulage industries face every day. Manpower as a company is very interested in the development of young people in all career avenues. It works for us as an industry. My particular area is driving the logistics, is what I've been involved in all my life. So to be involved with some, uh, an organisation like Think Logistics where companies are coming together in partnership to develop and add that kudos back into the industry works for me. I think it's where we need to be. The challenge on this day was for the pupils to come up with the best solution for transporting cargo, also known as sweets, across a river. They had limited materials and time, but were awarded points for the most sweets carried. A fun idea that absolutely got everyone working and thinking together as a team. Do 
So Rob, your business and IT teacher here at Blackpool Sixth Form College, that's yeah. a mouthful to say, this isn't it? it? Um, what leads you to get you know, the Think Logistics guys in and what, what makes you think that obviously they are fired up by it? I think it's just a fantastic opportunity for students really to experience something that's real world rather than rather than just a teacher going through the same old kind of here's another day another another lesson about another different topic it's somebody who's actually done that job for real you can come in and tell them about the issues now, a lot of them uh, either have got a very clear idea in the mind of what they want to do or, or haven't and we've, we've found there's a direct link between those who do know what they want to do with their success is against um, students who don't know what they do, want to do they, they often won't be as ambitious, they therefore don't work as hard at home, things like that. Whereas when they've got an idea, they go for it and they yeah. succeed then. What a great initiative and, and something that absolutely needs doing. Oh, we, I mean, there's one thing that I'm, you know very well I'm passionate about, bringing younger people into the industry. I mean, we're, we're very, very lax in how we do it, I think, as an industry. We've got the RHA, they've got the FTA, we've got the SMT, but really and truly, the one thing we do need is young blood. And also, it's the word logistics for a start. What the heck does it mean to a 14, 15, 60 year old? It amazes me. They don't even know what that word means. And so we've got to come up with something that actually educates and also shows them it's a great great industry as you know on the truck on the website we started putting games and apps in so we can get younger people involved in the industry we've got to start a really at a younger age it's no good doing it at 18 19 we've got to go back further and do it because it is a fascinating industry it engages computers engineering everything so it's really important for us and also you and me to actually engage younger people and get involved with it well that's it for part one but join us after the break when we've got tim's road test of the fuso canter and we'll be chatting to the drivers here at junction 38 getting their views on driverless trucks which sounds pretty terrifying to me We'll see you soon. Truck World TV, sponsored by Auto Trader Trucks.